Westminster's Visual Arts Committee welcomes you to our first ever online art exhibit, Pandemic Expressions. For the last several months, the COVID-19 pandemic has brought about dramatic changes in our routines and activities. Many artists have been using this time for creative pursuits, drawing, painting, fabric arts, photography, and more. The following art exhibit is made up of works created by Westminster artists during the pandemic. Carrie Hall. Carrie created this work of art entitled Chaos with Hope on the Horizon to reflect her feelings on life during the pandemic. It is a mixed media painting using fabric, acrylic paint, paper, and shells. Carrie said, It looks to me like the world spinning in chaos. Christine Jensen. Chris photographed this string of prayer beads she created during the pandemic using semi-precious stones, glass, and metal. Her photo is entitled, Protestant Prayer Beads in Thistle Colors. Chris learned about Protestant prayer beads a few years ago and soon began making them herself. The number and placement of the various beads is symbolic, and the beads serve as a guide to personal prayer. There are no memorized prayers to recite. You create your own prayer according to a pattern. The first set of beads guides you to praise God, the second set to confess your sins, the third to ask for intercession, and the final set to offer thanks. Chris's second photograph, entitled Masks for Friends, was made in April after she created her first assortment of face masks to protect against COVID-19. Chris says, I found the work to be calming at a time when I was feeling anything but calm, but giving them away made me feel even better, joyful even. She distributed this batch and subsequent batches to friends and family via Facebook. By June, she had shared more than 100 masks with people in 12 states. Troy Cleese On May 3rd, during the pandemic shutdown, Troy found he had some free time. He also had a large collection of wine corks gathered over the past 10 plus years. This collection, along with an empty frame and a large empty wine bottle, started the creative process. Using super glue and a sharp knife, Troy constructed this wall hanging, which is now on display in the wine room at his home. The title of Troy's piece is Wine Tour. It is 25 and a half inches tall and 20 inches wide. Judy Seaburn Beachy. Judy says, During my pandemic staycation, I have been cleaning and creating. Luckily, my basement clean-out has uncovered past art projects which I've used to create new pieces. Deconstructed Garden, a 16 by 20 inch pixel piece on canvas, was created from an old watercolor of flowers. Also during the cleaning, Judy's husband Greg uncovered his old high school art folder. Judy was attracted to the red colors on one of his projects, so she used it to create another pixel piece entitled Haunting from the Past. She loves the fact that this piece combines their two talents into one piece of art, which now hangs in their living room. It is 14 by 14 inches square. Judy has also been creatively doodling almost daily as a way to practice with watercolors. Land of Confusion is an example of one of her doodles. It is a matted watercolor, 
5 by 7 inches. Marge Luchtenberg Marge created a quilted wall hanging entitled Octavia's Garden Party. She says, Working in the cool quiet of my sewing room has been a blessing during the pandemic. I can shut out everything for a little while and concentrate on fabric and color. The octopus is an intelligent creature, and I learned about her as she took shape. She looks like she's partying. Marge's wall hanging is 45 by 40 inches and is made from a pattern by Laura Hine. Jan Davison During these challenging days, Jan found herself longing for the peace, solitude, and natural beauty of Lake Superior's North Shore in Minnesota. So she decided to paint images that helped her travel there through her art. Jan was also inspired to try a new style of acrylic painting, which she calls geometric realism. Her first painting in this style is titled Grand Marais. It is a view of the shoreline in this lovely town not far from the Canadian border. In this style of painting, Elements of the landscape are reduced to geometric shapes, and dots are used for details. Jan's second painting in this style is titled Rugged Shore. It depicts waves crashing on jagged, lichen-covered rocks just southwest of Grand Marais. Jan's third painting is Upper Gooseberry Falls, a view of the first in a series of impressive waterfalls in the popular Gooseberry Falls State Park. All three of her works were created on 16 by 20 inch wrapped canvas. Steve Dunn Steve used his 35mm Canon camera to take some striking photos during the pandemic. His first photograph is titled Tulip Field, taken in early May in Pella, Iowa. This year's Pella Tulip Festival was canceled for the first time since World War II due to COVID-19. Despite the cancellation, the tulips were still a blaze of glory. Steve's photo, Downtown Des Moines, captures our city skyline as seen from the EMC Overlook in McRae Park in late May. Steve's third photo is titled Rural Ugly, revealing junk vehicles adjacent to the High Trestle Trail between Madrid and Woodward in early April. Kayla Geertz At the start of the quarantine, Kayla and a friend decided to learn how to play the guitar. Kayla created this painting from a photo of her playing in her backyard, where she spent a lot of time dancing, reading, drawing, and doing schoolwork. Kayla says, Overall, the green in the picture was overwhelming, but I thought the environment and guitar fully encompassed a lot of what my circumstances have felt and looked like during the pandemic. She named this piece strings in the green. Of her next piece, Kayla says, apart from maybe two self-portraits, I've never really done any realistic face portraits with pencil. Kayla wanted to expand her artistic abilities, so she chose to draw country music artist John Denver. Kayla grew up listening to his music because her father is a big John Denver fan. 
Chalk art is something new that Kayla has enjoyed as it offers the opportunity to work outside and share her art and messages with those passing by. This work, entitled Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo, was inspired by artist Casey Drake. Kayla says it is dedicated to all healthcare workers and those on the front lines risking their lives to better the lives of others. Paula Murrell. During the pandemic, Paula used her creative skills to sew colorful face masks for friends and family. Before distributing them, she arranged them for an artistic photograph, which she has titled Collage 2020. Jennifer Stuber. Jennifer just began working with watercolors earlier this year. She says, It has been fun and kept me busy during this pandemic. At Easter time, Jennifer usually sends cards to friends and family. However, this year, she created her own cards using watercolors. Her card designs include crosses, chicks, eggs, and her pandemic bunny. Jennifer also creates cards for her young grandson, Henry, since she only sees him from a distance and cannot physically hug him. She uses her watercolor pencils to make the cards and sends them to Henry periodically. In addition to her card making, Jennifer also loves to paint flowers. Bloom of Hope is just one of many she has painted during the pandemic. Dick Kiefer When out walking, Dick is always on the lookout for unique vistas or visual details to capture with his camera. He was very fortunate to witness and photograph this spectacular display of clouds and light near his home at Wesley Acres. The title of this photo is Glory to God in the Highest. On another walk, Dick snapped this photo entitled Call and Karis 71520. Dick had ventured to Waterworks Park where he happened upon the installation of one of two sculptures created by Colorado artist Gail Folwell. She was present for the occasion, and Dick was delighted to chat with her about the two figures she sculpted to commemorate Ragbri founders John Karras and Donald Call. Dick's third photo, A Walk in the Rain, was taken on the nature trail at Wesley Acres after a rain shower. Beverly Waddell. Bev's painting, Pandemic 2020, was inspired by all the challenges we currently face from the effects of COVID-19. Bev says, All over our great country, the pandemic has changed our lives. I think about all of the children who are sick, the elderly who have to stay in their homes, people who have lost their jobs. Being social has become very hard. It has upset the whole world. I pray to God to have this pandemic stopped. Sharon Meisenheimer Though Sharon began making this quilt in 2014, the pandemic offered ample time for her to work on it and complete it. This quilt was created using the technique called English paper piecing, and it is all hand-stitched except for the quilting. The name of this quilt is Millefiori. This quilt is the result of a quilting class Sharon taught. She and her students studied the history of each quilt block as they created them using a technique called foundation paper piecing. The title of Sharon's quilt, Sylvia's Wedding, 
was inspired by a character in a book series. Sylvia received a quilt block from each of her friends when she got married. This is a common practice among quilters. Carla Killinger Carla put together a collage using some of the art created during lessons she did with her four-year-old granddaughter, Marlo, in California. The hour-long sessions, done via Zoom, included art as well as many other subjects to help Marlo stay engaged and be prepared for kindergarten. This piece is entitled, Art Time with Marlo. Prior to Easter, Carla created this acrylic stained glass design on a canvas curtain and named it Easter Light in COVID. Her husband, Scott Blackader, assisted her in applying the paint and they had a great deal of fun working together. The painting hung in their picture window for the month of April, drawing frequent comments from onlookers and sparking many neighborly conversations. Carla says, I like to think that our painting helped raise spirits and build community. Carolyn Larson Carolyn offers three unique works of art created during the pandemic. Her first piece, entitled Seek Harmony, is an acrylic painting on canvas. It was inspired by a quote from Sharon Gannon. Don't wait for a better world. Start now to create harmony and peace. It is up to you, and it always has been. Carolyn believes we all have a responsibility to love one another as Jesus did. She says, Prayers for harmony and peace must begin individually with commitment, clarity, and a deep compassion to make a difference in the world. This is love in action. For her second work, Appreciation Wreath, Carolyn cut out paper hearts and taped them to a wire wreath for her front door to thank all of the essential workers. They are the true heroes, Carolyn says. For her third work, entitled Everything Will Be Okay, Carolyn used acrylic paint on a wedge of wood from a tree, compliments of Greg and Judy Beachy, to create a rainbow of hope. Carolyn says, in today's world of uncertainty, we all need to know that everything will be okay. This concludes our exhibit. Thank you to all our contributing artists for sharing their creative endeavors during the pandemic. And thank you for viewing our online art exhibit. <music>